Well, let's go then. Stairway to Cinema, episode 13. How you doing, Amon? I'm not live yet, but whatever. Uh, hmm. okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm live. All right. Episode 13, uh, Stairway to Cinema. How you doing, Amon? Uh, I'm good. I'm, I'm sleepy, but, but I'm good. Sleep. Um, you, you told me you didn't watch shit? All I watched was the full season of uh, The Circle on Netflix. It's, oh. fucking, it's fucking terrible. Oh. It got it got a little bit good. It's a reality show. It's a social media experiment. Like the idea is actually cool, but the people that they picked are just too nice. Like they needed some conniving, you know, dickheads I in there to make it make it a little bit more fun. Yeah, reality TV does need dickheads. And The Bachelor. I'm all caught up on The Bachelor. It was an absolute train right. wreck of a woman this week, which was. <laughs> Look, this chick, I, I'll just tell you real quick. This chick apparently brought a bottle of champagne all the way from Des Moines, right? She had it all set up on this fireplace for, you know, Peter to come by. And they were going to have this nice, it was a big deal. She'd been saving the champagne for a year, okay? But then this other yeah. girl, this other girl walking with Peter, the bachelor, they they see the bottle of champagne and they just decide to pop it. So, you know, the next 30 minutes... 30, 45 minutes of that show was was golden reality TV train wreck. The chick just <laughs> lost control over this champagne bottle. So that, mm-hmm. that was the highlight probably of the week in terms of viewer. So that's all I got. I'll never <laughs> understand why, why you watch that shit, but okay. You'll understand, I think, when you got a woman, you know, a woman okay. or a man. I don't, I've never really asked, you know. <laughs> right. Maybe both. Maybe both. Who knows? Um, no, I think, look, because if I was single, I don't think I'd watch it. You know, I don't. Mm. It's it's fun when you got a girl that you love on your side and just talking shit about everybody. Like, that's the best part. I can see that. Yeah. yeah, it's the only good thing about reality TV. Like, I'm not sitting here rooting for anybody. Like, they're all train wrecks. It's just. It's but, a I mean, little sadistic. Some, it's there's a little some sadistic. kind of fascination. Yeah, it's it's like it's like you don't want to watch it, but yeah. you can't turn away sometimes. And at least you know there's no commercials, so mm. just burn right through that shit. All right. So what did you watch? I just want to make a quick shout out to Jim Carrey because it's his birthday today. Oh, what the fuck? What? No, we're not doing that here. All right? We're not doing that here. And also James Earl Jones, who's 89. Okay. All right, we can do anyway. that because, dude, I thought he was dead. So. Yeah. No, he he's not dead. He just did Darth Vader voice and shit. <laughs> yeah, and he can still do it as we as we saw on Rogue One. Yeah, and I didn't see the Lion King. How was his voice for Mufasa? I watched in German. No idea. <laughs> okay. All right. I Never don't give mind. a shit about that movie, dude. That's true. That's All right. True. I watched quite a bit, but this time it's the first time I ever watched more rewatches than like um, new movies. Okay. So we can go over those quickly. Um, but first, I, I watched Full Metal Jacket for the first time. Ooh! All and right, actually, let me, let's I liked it. it. Uh, yeah. I thought it was better than Platoon. Okay. Um, like, it's it's way more entertaining than Platoon. Especially the first half, of course. Um, yeah, they're, they're very different. Very different. That is true. Yeah, uh, yeah good movie. But st- I would say probably... Mm, not my... F- is it my favorite Kubrick movie? It's definitely Maybe. one of mine, but I still maintain the first half is a masterpiece. The second that half is true, yeah. struggles. I mean, the first it, half is an absolute masterpiece, in my opinion. It's so tense. Yeah, I agree. And Arlie Ermy, you're never going to get a better drill instructor than that guy in those scenes. And a lot of that shit was improv. So, um, the the second half, it, it kind of feels like like you. It's obvious that they shot in a studio, like mm-hmm. you know that they built the set. It it's not that convincing. I feel like. Oh, me so horny. Me love you long time. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. <laughs> <funny>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I don't know. Uh, I mean, Matthew Modine is kind of. Eh, yeah, I still I maintain like. too that Matthew Modine. I don't think was the right fit for Joker because I heard I feel other... like in the first in the first half he's better than the second one. Yeah, yeah. I I, I really man that movie is a mind fuck to me because the first half I love it so much and I've seen the first half I don't know how many fucking times. But it's even funny Vince, that, like, Vincent D'Onofrio too got to give oh, him yeah. credit for his role. Um, 
Actually, I've seen the first half of Full Metal Jacket before two times, actually, but I never mm. finished the movie. And now yeah. the first time, it was worth it, you know. I yeah, it's, it. it's worth watching. It's a good movie. It's a good Vietnam movie, too. But. True, yeah. And it's it's kind of like, it's in the end, when when they face off the sniper, uh, it's it's pretty gory, and I like that, you know? I did like, the yeah, the, the ending is, is all right. Is all right. Yeah. But it just it just is that movie that reminds me that it could have been like a ten out of ten. Like it could have been. Right. For me it's it's a seven out of ten, but close to an eight. Um yeah, probably yeah. have to see it again. I'd agree with you there, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> but actually like I, I would rather watch Full Metal Jacket again than Platoon, I think. Yeah, I'd I'd much rather watch Platoon. I've seen Platoon, I don't know, probably twenty, fifty times in my life. Oh okay. That's... Yeah, yeah, like, I mean, me and my, that's a family movie. <laughs> that sounds uh, weird when yeah, I say sure. that, but I don't you know, know how movies just kind of roll in your family? So Platoon is a big one in my family, even though there's no Vietnam veterans in my life. But, <laughs> you know, it's just a... Um, I, I can totally see that. Yeah, because it's a movie that we, like, we'll even say the lines to each other, so it's weird. All right. All right. Um, I rewatched Snatch. Uh, I think I, I said that last week that I was going to do that. And you I stuck did. to your guns. Yeah. Um, and Snatch is still just, you know, the best comedy ever. The best I love it. comedy For me ever. it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. I think I explained that plenty of yeah. times. Um, I did see I the, to... uh, I did, speaking of that, I did see the trailer finally to The Gentleman, and that does look. Uh... Does like it also has a good rating on IMDb right now. Like it seems to be good. It's just like, nice uh, to see Guy Ritchie come back. Yeah, back to his roots. Yes. yes. Um, I had some friends over and uh, we watched Kill Bill. Mm, they, both. They've both? never seen no the first one. Okay. We still gotta gotta meet to to finish. Um, uh, they've never seen it before. I think really? they liked it, even though they were like, they were talking a lot. How many times movie, have you seen? Oh yeah, 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 yeah! You can't, you can't have that shit. You gotta shut that shit down, dude. Yeah, but you know, I, I can't blame him because, like, you know, when friends meet, they talk and stuff. If mm -hmm. I have, if I had never seen the movie before, I would be pretty mad, I think. But you know, yeah. I, I, I've seen it like three times before that, so. There was That's a cousin. There was a cousin of mine. We used to watch movies when we were kids, and he had to say the lines of every movie, and I, I mm -hmm. remember snapping at him, just like, "Will you shut the fuck up? I can't, I can't yeah, take it." I hate that stuff. It's so irritating. Yeah. Um, then I also okay, uh, a quick one. I rewatched Once Upon a Time in Hollywood um, for the Shocking. tenth time. Shocking. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. um, then I don't know why, but like it was nighttime, past midnight, and I just decided to watch the Simpsons movie. Okay. And that's a movie I I can recite line for line. I think. Oh really? I've, I've seen it so many times because, like, oh. we had it on DVD when I was a kid, and uh, yeah. Do you like The Simpsons in general? I love The Simpsons. Actually, oh, I didn't know that. It, uh, I the didn't know Simpsons. that. It's it's actually my favorite cartoon. Wow. Uh, okay. But right. only the the first twelve or thirteen seasons, I guess. Well, here's it the gets, here, it gets really shitty. Here's the kicker, though. Here's the kicker. Right. This is this is what's gonna. Tell me if you if you're a Simpsons guy or not. Who's the best character on The Simpsons? I mean, you, you can't go wrong with Homer. There you go. There you go. You know? I mean, but, I but also, like, there's so many good side characters. Mo is great. Yeah. Uh, Barney. Wiggum. I like Chief Wiggum. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I like Skinner his, is pretty good. I like Chief Wiggum's stupid son. I love that Ralph, character. Yeah. Yes, Ralph. He's so stupid. I love it. Simpsons is is rich of good characters. I agree. I agree. And a uh, great cartoon. I can I can watch that all day actually. I'm I'm pretty stoked for for Disney Plus because they have they have the Simpsons and I I mm -hmm. you know I will watch the whole season like the whole show over and over again. I think there was controversy over the controversy over that because uh, <laughs> <laughs> because of the uh, too much walk culture. It's, I know. The uh the the aspect ratio I guess caused some trouble. They did say they were gonna fix that, so maybe it'll be fixed by the time you guys get it. What's the issue? The issue is that the original Simpsons was all pan and scan. I I, I always say pan and scan four by three. Yeah. Um, uh, but they've uh, stretched it to fit widescreen, and they've cut the off. Fuck? Yeah, they've cut off 
quite a bit of content by doing that. Like certain little things have been cut off. So Disney did respond and they are going to fix it. So, cause I think that's yeah, kind of yeah, a big deal. You can't awful, dude. like, if it's shot in four by three, you got to show it in four by three or at least give the option, you know, you also, like, yeah. I don't mind four by three with the Simpsons. Yeah. No, no, no. Especially cause that's how it was originally fucking presented. Like, I don't want to see anything stretched stretched. Is no, no way. Yeah. Um. All right. Yeah. Simpsons movie is is pretty okay. I guess. I I think I know it way too much, uh, to actually still laugh about the jokes. I saw it in the cinema. The cinema. I think my brother did too. Yeah, that was two thousand seven, dude. Um. <laughs> Long time. But ago. it's it's still good. It's 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 better than the later seasons. Um. I I went to the cinema with some coworkers to see Parasite again. Ooh. And Parasite is still great. Ooh. Um, the then, hype. right, yeah. Uh, then I watched a movie that I. It's been years since I watched it the first time, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I didn't remember it being that good. <laughs> I watched Drive with Ryan Gosling. Yes, there we and go. Dude, baby. I fucking loved it. Like there this time, I, I I didn't remember shit, but dude, ah. Yeah, it's I've, so good. I've it's spoken cool... on, yeah, I've spoken on Drive a few times on this show because it, uh, it it's like almost top twenty for me because it was. Uh, I can see that. Yeah, like a modern day taxi driver too. A lot of the, just the, and I, and I love love Ryan Gosling in that role. And his uh, character is so badass. And it's Carrie like, Mulligan, right? Carrie yeah. Mulligan. Yeah, I really like her in general. So. Yeah. She always like I always uh, confused her with Michelle Williams. Oh, don't uh, do that. Don't do that to me. I, I know. I, know. I don't do look, that anymore. Look, we just reconnected with The Simpsons. All right, let's not. <laughs> no, I'm not a Michelle Williams fan. <laughs> God, um, you know, Michelle Williams is the new Meryl Streep. I'm just going to throw that out there. Just Okay. She's, she's going to get nominated for everything, and she's always going to cry. Boom. There you go. Yeah. Sounds, sounds likely. <laughs> um, yeah, so back to Drive. Uh, Ryan Gosling's character, I I love like he's so calm and quiet and reserved, but also like there are scenes where he's like the da- most dangerous motherfucker in the room, mm-hmm. and I love that. You know the the parts with extreme violence. Oh the yeah, drive is great. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of surprised with the the violence in the movie, but you know me, I love I love some good extreme violence in a movie, especially if it's done right. And it was done really good in that movie, so I'm glad you yeah. uh, enjoyed that again. And I, I didn't remember Brian Cranston being that good. I really liked him in the movie. Yeah, because I remember I saw it once, like right when it came out. So I I wouldn't mind. You gotta check it out again. again. Yeah, yeah. Now that's it's, funny it's because short. I I never watched the follow up either, which is not a follow up. Oh, know what I'm talking only about. God forgives. Only God forgives. Yeah, because I heard that was not that good. I watched the first thirty minutes of that some years ago. Actually, like. It, it was kind of boring uh, mm. and weird. I think Nicholas Winding Refn is just, you know, one of those directors who sometimes his, his style is just too out there, you know? Yeah, because there's that neon demon, and I don't know if I'm going to watch that. That looks a little strange. The neon yeah, demon. Yeah, it does. I haven't seen no that. Fanning. I think I think Drive is the own. No, he made Bronson as well, right? Was that him that made Bronson? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think oh, so. Wow. Um, but I haven't seen much of his work. Uh, well, he's got two good ones in there, at least. That's true. But I would say Drive is his, uh, his top. His magnum opus? Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> true, yeah. Um, then I also rewatched The Lighthouse with some co-workers. What did the co-workers think? They thought it was great, and I did too. <laughs> Still. So you're, getting, so you're getting along with the co-workers, then? Really well, yeah. Um, yesterday I went to the cinema on my we'll, own. We'll be talking about the lighthouse a little bit here. Yeah. Okay. When we get to the snubs. Right. Yeah. That's right. Um, I I went to the cinema yesterday by my by, by myself to to watch 1917. Oh. An Oscar movie. All and right. The Golden Globe movie. <clears throat> All right. It was. It was a unique experience. I mean, okay. I expected that. Uh huh. 
it's it's not a 10 out of 10 movie i i think it's like close to being a nine but right now it's an eight okay. um i will see it again on sunday i think but it's like there it, it's very there it's not that action-packed as i thought it would be mm. um but there are some moments that are like instantly for me one of the best moments ever like dude the camera work in that movie is amazing the actors are great even though like all the big names are in very small roles like even right. smaller than in once upon a time in hollywood yeah. like people like colin firth and uh, benedict cumberbatch they all have just one scene that's it yeah and the scene isn't even that long but the the two leading men uh tom and baratheon and uh that other guy they're pretty good really? like pretty the damn other great. guy i like the other guy yeah he's he's very good he yeah. was also in uh, Captain Fantastic with Viggo Mortensen. Good movie. Yeah. Seems to be a rising star. Hmm. So yeah, 1917 is, is pretty, like, it's it's definitely worth checking out. At the theater? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, I might, I might catch that when I'm in uh, California next week. You should. Yeah, yeah, because I know, you know, it's something that the family does, so... Maybe I don't know. I'm only gonna be out there for about five days, so we'll see. We'll see. But actually, I have, to, I have to say there, um, like it doesn't look that like there are uh, cuts, but there are. Like, ob- you you can notice when they cut in the movie. Sometimes. Yeah, th- there was a story I don't know Yahoo or some shit where they they were explaining how they did it. I didn't click on it. I didn't read it. So obviously they had to do cuts, but. But yeah. they pulled it off, you think? The one yeah, shot totally. experience? So, I mean, it, it doesn't matter that it's not a true one shot. It's still pretty damn impressive. Right. Because you and me both are, you know, we talked about it, fans of these elaborate one shot type things, you know, like The Revenant has splashes of that. Birdman. Out, Outlaw King was another oh, yeah. bitchin' one shot there for like. Boogie uh, Nights. Boogie the Nights. Boogie Nights. Yeah. Oh, fun fact uh, I actually bought three movies. Uh, they they're still yet to arrive. I bought Punch Drunk Love, so okay. uh, I can finish like. Then I um, I've seen all the T- Paul Thomas Anderson movies, which is all cool. the PT except for the short film. Right? Yeah, right. I don't care. About <laughs> <short film>. Um, <laughs> and I I ordered uh, the Darjeeling Limited by Wes Anderson. Oh, that's a good movie. I yeah, my dad that. told me it is it is great, so I thought, yeah. well, why not? I like Wes um, Anderson movies though. Oh. Me too. You're either gonna like him or not with Wes Anderson. I feel like he's one of those directors yes, that people totally. either really love or they just don't. But he's one of those directors who's, who's really unique, and uh, yes. I like like distinct like I like his style especially. Um, what's the f- third movie I, I bought? Um, fuck. <laughs> I. You stumped? No way. I I don't remember what I bought, dude. Maybe uh, you're tired today. <laughs> um, one sec, I can look that up. <laughs> one sec, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Wild at Heart by David Lynch. Oh, uh, you finally get to see Wild at Heart. That's right. Yeah. Oh, I also, last week, I, I didn't tell you, but I bought Copland, but didn't see it yet. Oh, okay. I got the Blu-ray of Copland. Uh, I'm excited to see what you think about Copland. Cause I, it's by Mangold, dude. Like, yeah, I, I'm expecting it, a lot. And I feel like Stallone's performance in that was was very good because I feel like Stallone has given us two very good performances in his career. Creed, the first well, yeah, yeah, okay, Creed, yeah, but the first Rocky, he was he was really good. Right. But then the other Rockies were just kind of a popcorn fest. What about know? First Blood? Uh, First Blood, I like the story of First Blood, but I think the execution, like the ending of First Blood, gets a little wacky. Um, that is towards, true, yeah. towards the end but the the tension <laughs> of the start of him getting stopped by the cop and stuff i think is is magnificent i think um i'd honestly like to see first blood redone i hate to say that i don't like remakes too much but i think if it was done you know good with the right actor i think that could mm-hmm. be a really cool movie because you know you could really i mean ptsd is always going to be i feel like something um uh, that's looked on in film anyway. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but also mm-hmm. like in Copland, you've also Harvey Keitel and Robert De Niro. 
It's a very good cast. Exciting. And uh and Ray Liotta too, which is right, uh, yeah. He's really good. All the mafia boys. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, I'll probably see that next week. Uh not sure. Um I I'm I gotta admit, I'm I'm pretty damn hyped for you know, a movie you might have heard of, uh, Uncut <laughs> Gems. Mm. <laughs> I'm really hyped, dude, and it's coming out on Netflix uh, on the 31st. I'll say and that I'm not hyped, but I'm still looking forward to seeing. I watched the trailer like three times because it's so cool. That's another snub. Another snub. That's right. Uh, I, I heard, that's what I heard. Yeah. yeah. Um. So out of hype about Adam Sandler, I watched the Meyerowitz story. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. So what? How is this? Uh, this movie. I gotta say, Noah Baumbach is, is also... It, he's a very good writer. He did and, that? Uh, he directed it? Yeah, he did. Wrote it? Okay. Yeah. But Mar- Marriage Story is better, but I, th- I still think that Meyerowitz Stories is pretty damn cool. Like, it's... It feels just taken out of life. And right. He's good at the, writing life. The dialogue mm-hmm. is amazing. Like, he's, he's, he's very good at writing characters and um, dialogue, like, natural dialogue. Thanks mm-hmm. for the host. Um, and, like... It, it was so cool to see Adam Sandler and Ben Stiller, Dustin Hoffman, Adam Driver is in it. Like, yeah. Good fucking yeah, movie. Ben Stiller, it, Dustin Hoffman, yeah. Because I remember seeing that, and I remember, like, when it came out on Netflix, I was like, what is this fucking movie? And like, how didn't I not hear about it type thing? Because Netflix seems to be good about doing that, you know? Yeah, it feels like Noah Baumbach, he seems to, like, uh, he, I think he worked twice now with Netflix. Maybe there's there's a third movie I don't know, but uh, it seems to be working out because like this movie is pretty good and Marriage Story is just insanely good, like even better dialogue and stuff. So yeah, he's I gotta check out his earlier work, but I like before I looked him up, I didn't know any of the movies he, he's made. Noah Baumbach. Yeah. yeah. No idea. Squid in the some, whale. You know. Right. He made some stuff with Adam Driver. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I gotta check it out. Um, and the last movie I watched last night, I watched a documentary called The Dawn Wall. What would you um, give uh, Meyerowitz stories? I, you seven know, out of ten. Seven out of ten. Okay. Um, I watched The Dawn Wall, which is a, a documentary about some free climbers climbing like an impossible wall in Yosemite. And yeah, it's it's a very good documentary. Like very similar to Free Solo. I was gonna ask, is good. it is it as intense as Free Solo? It's different. Mm-hmm. Um, like I think they're both equally good. I, I can't really compare them. And it, like it's always hard to to rate documentaries. I feel like. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, so yeah, it was pretty good. I like documentaries. And speaking of documentaries, I did watch the first episode of the newly released uh, Netflix documentary by Aaron, the Aaron Hernandez uh, documentary. The mind of Aaron Hernandez or something. Oh, I think inside. a friend of mine watched that as well. Yeah, I followed that story when it came out. Aaron Hernandez, a unbelievably talented tight end that played for the New England Patriots, murdered like three people. So it's like, huh. it's a really interesting That's documentary. A shame. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> fucked up because like, it seemed like the guy had it all, but it seems like episode two, they're going to go into more of his... Uh, gang affiliations and shit like that so i'm looking forward to watching more of that netflix i love their fucking documentaries love them yeah netflix has some good shit especially in that department i agree and i feel like netflix is getting better and better now that the streaming wars are uh heating up heating up yeah dude, like the the like very very recent the netflix movies have been great I agree. like before that you know there are some some good movies like outlaw king you know, Bright but, was clearly the best one. You know, Bright. You know, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, there, there's so much shit like Bright on Netflix. I agree. Uh, I still haven't seen stuff like Fractured. You know. Oh, you gotta watch Fractured. Bullshit. I still, no. I still love Fractured, man. Fractured was a good time. Fractured was a good time. Dude, I'm on a roll with only watching good movies right now. You know, and I, and I, like and I feel like if you would have switched out Sam Worthington for a, a better actor. You might have, uh, oh, Buck Nutty in my chat says, man, I thought Bright had so much potential. I agree. I feel like Bright, if they would have gone into the, um, you know, the, the whole fantasy element of how it started and shit could have been better. But I thought Will Smith was fucking terrible in Bright. I, I can tell you exactly what's the issue. It's David Aya. 
Yeah, I agree. David Ayer is David Ayer with his uh, gang street bullshit. Get out of here. <laughs> you're not Back. a fan of the urban. You're not a not fan really, of that be, urban like, shit. He, he seems to be so obsessed with that, and he's so bad at doing it. Like end of watch. You know, that's eight years ago. That's his only good movie. Mm. It's amazing that he pulled off End of Watch so well, but then can't. Because you're right. Because you're right. His 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 gang shit that he puts in movies, it's not executed well. It's not. No. It never is. And it wasn't executed well in Bright. It was kind of bad. Uh, by the way, I just I uh, just found out they they're making a Bright sequel. Oh, good. That's good. And it's again by David Ayer. Yeah. Mm. Dude, I'm I so think, hyped. Um, I think Bright as a series would have been a little bit more fun to watch, but right, I don't think you yeah. can get Will Smith for an entire series. Speaking of Will Smith, Bad Boys for Life, I am hyped for Bad Boys for um, Life. I actually thought about seeing it today, but I I, don't know, I, I did not um, like <laughs> see it. You're yeah, like, like, do I really want to do this today? <sighs> I mean, it, I heard it's just kind of average. It's not bad, but it's like, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. I might see it next week. I probably see it next week, but uh, I'm not crazy about it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, shall we move to the Oscars? Because that's all I watched. You know, it's funny. Uh, speaking of Will Smith, because um, Buck Nutty over here is talking about him. He says that it it was such a mediocre role in performance and bright, which is funny to me because I just want to bring up the point um, that David Ayer directed Suicide Squad, and I thought Will Smith. <clears throat> delivered in Suicide Squad. I thought Will Smith was one of the better elements of Suicide Squad. I think we both agree that Suicide Squad was poor and terrible. The worst movie ever made. And I think the no, Suicide the Suicide Squad with James Gunn is going to be pretty amazing. But I just want to say it's just weird to me that Will Smith seemed like he was there for Suicide Squad. Like he acted. And I thought he was there. But then in Bright, he just... Like what the yeah. fuck? I don't I don't get the bright role at all. It's weird. David Ayer is just he's an annoying director. He's a very annoying director. True, but and but he keeps working, you know. And yeah. I hate that. <laughs> yeah. All right, the Oscars. The um, Oscars. The Oscars, mate. The recap of the century, twenty twenty. <laughs> the recap. <laughs> All right, let's let's start at the bottom again with uh, best international feature film. Hey, bro, I mean you're skipping over the honorary awards, okay? Are they any? Yeah, your boy. Oh, uh, David Lynch got one. Your dad's boy, uh, David Lynch. Yeah, but yeah, but that's all. That's already some months ago. Or and Wes started. Studi, Wes Studi, you know. Oh. Hey, if you need a Native American, you, we know who you call. Uh, dude, he's great. <laughs> Wes I, Studi. I, I really liked him in Hostels. <laughs> I did too. I did too. I, I, I look. I loved him with Magua in uh, yeah. Last of the Mohegans. He was. I hated him so much that character. Like when I was a kid, you know. But of I didn't. Course, yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm saying that he acted so well that you hated him. Like it was perfect. He was just the perfect, right. brutal fucking Native American that you just needed to die at some point. But you understood his motives. I love Last of the Mohegans. But then I'll see that again. But then he he made a lot of bad ones. Like Geronimo was fucking terrible. Like. But Hostels, I gotta get, I gotta give it to you, man. Hostels, like that was a return to form. He was, he was one of True. the best parts about Hostels. Yeah, great uh, fucking western. Great movie, great movie, Hostels. So yeah, best international feature film. Uh, yes. I think this is like we don't have to talk about that because you haven't seen any, and I've only seen one, and I think it's pretty clear that I think Parasite will certainly win, because yes. Parasite is also nominated as best picture, which kind of tells you. That to me, the only this category. To me, the only other one that seems to be hyped would be the Pain and Glory, the Antonio um, The, the, the Miserable is set to be really good, right? But I'm just saying, speaking because Antonio got nominated for Pain right. and Glory, mm-hmm. that maybe. But I don't see it happening. I agree with you, Parasite. The hype is real. I think that's going to take the international yeah, feature film. We also had the same the same situation last year with Roma, which won. Like which was nominated for uh, mm-hmm. foreign language movie and best picture, which, I mean, it's kind of stupid. I think that shouldn't shouldn't happen. I it's kind of a I'm torn because I mean I know you hold Parasite on high regard. You agree that it should be nominated for best picture, but it right, is a but, foreign language movie, which they're not calling it that anymore. I don't wonder why. I'm sure somebody got into a tizzy about that title. 
No, no we're going to call it international feature film now. <laughs> it doesn't make a difference to me. You're going to hear a lot of rants on this show, ladies and gentlemen. The Oscars, you know, I've, I've watched the Oscars since 1986. and they've So you're mad worse. about the nominations? No, I just, I'm just getting sick of the Oscars. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I'm going to okay. contain it. I'm going to contain it as best I can. So this one's going to Parasite for sure for me. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, best live action short. We can skip over that. Haven't seen we can any. Skip over best best uh, animated short film as well. Right. You and I both we agree there. You know we chest bump for there. We don't like short shit. So no, this yeah, those are just <laughs> categories nobody gives a shit about. Actually, it feels that way. But they always you know oh my god you know daughter one. It's like nobody saw that shit. Get out of here. <laughs> right. So best animated feature film. I'm so happy that. That Klaus got nominated and not the Lion King. I did see uh, that fuck the Klaus. Yeah, I saw that Klaus got nominated because you mentioned that you liked you liked Klaus. Yeah, it's like I wouldn't say it's as good as as Spider Verse, but it has the same freshness to it. Like the animation style is kind of unique and stuff. It yeah. it doesn't have any animal sidekicks. It's just you know an original, fresh animated movie, and I like that. Spider Verse was unbelievable. Unbelievable. True. Yeah. Oh, I heard that I Lost My Body is pretty good. Um, it's on Netflix. I got to see that. Oh, it seems um, a little heavy. A little heavy. Might be, yeah. Uh, so Toy Story 4 I still need to see, and I do want to see Missing Link. I would like to see Missing Yeah, me Link. too. No, I, I kind of want to see that, actually. Yeah. Um, but I'm rooting for Klaus. I'm kind of surprised Frozen 2 didn't get... Uh, in there, so. <laughs> I think that's funny. Let it go, as, <laughs> as they would say. <laughs> right. Oh, that's so funny. Anyway. All right. So, what's your pick? Do you have a pick? Oh, uh, my pick. You haven't uh, seen any, but since I haven't seen any pick. of them, I think I'm gonna go Missing Link. I'm gonna go, you know, Golden Globes. Just carry it over. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna go with Klaus, obviously. Klaus. Best documentary short. Also, skip over that. Um, oh, you're not. You're not. You're not rooting for the St. Louis Superman starring Sami Khan and I'm sorry. Whoever they are. Um, <laughs> best documentary feature. Like I've seen some documentaries, but I haven't seen any of those. So. I agree. I haven't seen one of them. I haven't seen like, one of them. And I noticed that Honeyland is, is also, also yeah in the feature film. So what the fuck, Almond? What is going on here? I don't know. It seems to be a good documentary, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, Edge of Democracy. I kind of maybe want to see that. Um. Mm, I don't know. Moving on. Well, moving on. Best achievement <laughs> in visual effects. All right. Uh, I, I don't know why I the know Irishman. For. I don't know why the Irishman is nominated there. I don't. I, I think it got kind of a bad rap with the visual effects, even though some of the visual effects were really good. I think it was pretty jarring for some people, specifically the De Niro scene when he's stomping on a man's face. Uh, right, but I, I still think it's it's marvelous how they use that new technology of, like it's not motion capture stuff. They don't have no, any markings yeah. in the face. It's it's, it's I don't know how it exactly works, of course, but I watched a video on it, on it and it's it's like very uh, revolutionary, actually. And I'll tell you one thing. When I saw the Golden Globes and I saw Pacino and De Niro again, it was like, yeah, that uh, de-aging did pretty well. Did pretty well. <laughs> yeah. It did. Like, I think El Pacino, like, on El Pacino worked the best. Yeah, Pacino oh. looks amazing in The Irishman. Like, I, and, uh, yeah. I don't know. Sometimes it's a, it's a little jarring with Joe Pesci, and especially De Niro has like when he when he has those physical moments, as you said, you know, then it's mm. clearly noticeable. But still, I think and the, the blue eyes worked. And the blue eyes. Oh yeah, kind right. Of, yeah, that's true. I think they jump, they pop a little too much. And you're right about Pesci. There's some scenes where he just looks too clean, too clean. Yeah. Yeah. But the other nominations, what do you think? Lion King, Skywalker, Dude, Endgame. I, I'm. I can't believe that Lion King is nominated for visual effects. That's a fucking animated movie. What are you talking about, man? I mean, it's, you know, it's visual. There's effects. <laughs> I know, but it's it's completely computer generated. So I don't think it's it should be in this category. Okay. What about I 1917? I mean, obviously that had Dude, to take some... He looks amazing. Okay. What's your pick here, though? What's the pick? Um, I mean... I guess Star Wars and Avengers are always. Uh, I mean, you can't go wrong with the effects on those movies. Yeah. And I think I would, uh, I would go maybe with 1917 or Avengers Endgame. 
I think I'd go maybe Avengers and Irishman, honestly, because you kind of convinced me with Irishman. For some reason, I when I thought about the Golden Globes again, and you're right, the markings were completely eliminated from their faces, and that's pretty good. That's pretty oh, good. by the way, uh, Nicholas says that Honeyland is a documentary from his country, Ooh. Macedonia, I think, um, and it's pretty hyped. But he hasn't seen it. Okay, Macedonia is yeah, not a thing anymore. Come on, <laughs> that's not true. Dude. <laughs> um, okay, so I think. Yeah, why not? I, I go with Avengers Endgame. Hmm. Yeah, because it's like, it's, you know, it's it's typical CGI stuff, but it looks so good. Yeah, but think about it, too. I mean, I don't think Downey Jr. lost all that weight, did he? Like, in the first few scenes? I mean, that, that looked oh. pretty good. He looked like shit in those first few scenes. So. And also, the, the Hulk looked good in a Hulk way, you look, know? It, yeah. It's, I don't know. It's I, I like Avengers Endgame. Not as much as you, but I think this this award, you know, I'm I'm fine with that. Just don't yeah. give it to the Lion King, please. <laughs> I don't um, think Skywalker is gonna get it. So I don't think Skywalker should be nominated for anything. But okay, Best damn sound editing. Um, so we got 1917 Joker, Le Mans. Uh, I mean Ford v Ferrari. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and Star Wars. Uh, yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> like I can't tell what is sound editing, dude. Well, it's uh, it's where they edit the sounds. <laughs> oh, thank you. No, like when I watch a movie, I don't think about that stuff. So I. Oh, I by just the way. Think, yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. You were finishing a thought. I think it. 1917 is probably for me the pick, though. So uh, I just wanted to bring up something. One thing I do like about the Oscars is they at least show clips of what they're talking about when they're. Uh, not oh yeah, that things. is true. I forgot to bring that up last week with the Golden Globes. That irritated the fucking shit out of me that they didn't show any scenes at all from the acting. Like, you know, like that's something I actually look forward to when I'm watching the Oscars is they show you a scene, you know, and you're like, oh, yeah, he was pretty fucking good. You know, that kind of thing. right. Yeah. Or it makes you want to see the movie that you weren't originally going to see that kind of thing. So I thought that was weird with. So when you see this category, they're going to show you some little clips of like sound editing. That's kind of what I was getting to, but mm. yeah, it's a weird category. It's always been a weird category. Like my gut, even though I haven't seen the movie is probably going to go Ford versus Fiority because yeah. of the, uh, the car uh, well, work. I'm sure I'd be fine with that as well. Like sound editing is something when it's good, you don't even think about it. Like you don't notice it. And the very next category is equally just as fucking Sound you know. mixing, yeah. <laughs> Sound mixing, all right. Uh, I just go with that Astra because... Uh, yeah, I'm with you there. I want that Astra to win something, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'm with you there. And also, the sound was really good in Ad Astra with the... True, uh, yeah. That moon chase is what I think about. I, I loved the sound oh, of the yeah. moon chase. Yeah, right. You're right, yeah. 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 Um, so, don't you find it weird that I, I don't mention Once Upon a Time in Hollywood in those categories? In sound mixing? <laughs> yeah. Oh. I didn't give a shit. Okay. I mean, Next one. look, the sound is good. The cars sounded good in Hollywood. So. Like, you got to admit, on the on a technical standpoint, Hollywood is pretty damn good. Technically, I mean, I, I can't complain about the shots or anything. Yeah, my, my problem with Hollywood is it's been stated, the story and, and stuff. Right, yeah. Um, all right, next, next one is also kind of... Best ah. achievement in music written for motion pictures. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not forget that Eminem has an Oscar. Let's, <laughs> let's be reminded that Eminem has an Academy right. Award. Uh, um, yeah. Oh, did you hear that uh, Billie Eilish is making the new Bond song? Oh, boy. I, you know, um, and gosh darn it, I can't wait to hear that, you know? <laughs> I don't right. get that. I don't get that. That's when I know I'm really getting too old, man, is like that. Like my girl played a Billie Eilish song, and I'm like, "What the fuck?" I hate that music. Am I so listening much. to right now? Yeah, that's. I, I don't know. For me, that's like <sighs> edge lord music, and I, I I don't think she's the right t- like type of artist for James Bond. Yeah, I don't like I don't lazy, know. pretentious fucking artists, and that's just what she screams. True, to yeah. Me, so, but anyway, original yeah. song. I, I'm just gonna go with Rocket Man, even though I don't give a shit about it. I'm anything. gonna go with Rocket Man too. I'm gonna agree with you, Amon, because oh, that's nice. Go it's the Elton only nom- John. 
it's the only nomination Rockman has got. That's so well, sad. I mean, it might go to Randy Newman too, because I think Randy Newman is nominated for every fucking song he ever fucking you know makes in a movie. Yeah, okay. I, I don't know who that is, but okay. Uh, look, <laughs> if you go, nominated. if you go through a lot of like '80s movies and shit, he just seems to have a lot of original songs. Randy Newman is is one of the go to Hollywood dudes. You got a friend in me. I mean, you know, right. He's a beast. He's a beast. Oh, this seems early. Yeah, we are a little early today. Yeah, it is a little early. 9.45 um, for me. But anyway, this category, I, I don't really mind. Uh, next yeah. one. This, like, this is actually interesting. Best achievement in music written for motion picture, uh, pictures score. Yeah. I haven't seen Little Women, but like... <sighs> For me, this is between. I don't see why Star Wars is nominated. It's, you know, the, the soundtrack has gotten Oscars before. You know? Did you know that John Williams this is his fifty-second nomination for an Oscar? I mean, he deserves them all, I guess. But, how, uh, how insane is that, though, when you think about it? Because I, I don't think he should be in there either. Uh, I, I liked the score, but it's it's a Star Wars score. I mean, I don't. Yeah. You know, when you compare it to. You already know what I'm going with here. I'm going to go with Joker all the way. Yeah, me this, too. That score, because I feel like that score elevated that film even further. Uh, even though I got to say, 1917 has an outstanding score as well. Is it good? Because Thomas it's, Newman has always been solid. It is so, like, my favorite scene in the movie is so fucking epic because of the music. Mm -hmm. And I, I literally cried because it was so epic. You cried in a movie? It was, yeah, yeah I, I do that frequently. Um, no way! But, yeah. uh, dude, 1917 is so gripping. Ah, good movie. Okay, yeah, but I, I, I'll i go with Joker as well. Uh, just one of the best scores I ever heard. Yeah, yeah. Hilder Guntater Theater, you know, that that chick. Yeah. I think you pronounced her right. I, I think right. I was close. I think it was yeah. close. <laughs> um, best achievement in makeup and hairstyling. Mm, mm. Uh yeah, I haven't seen Bombshell. I haven't seen Maleficent. I haven't seen Judy. I think like maybe Bombshell deserves it. Why haven't you seen those movies, Almon? Do you hate women? Is that why? So Maleficent, <laughs> I haven't seen because I don't fucking care about that movie. And the yeah, other neither, two are not out yet here. I think. Yeah, I want to see Bombshell. Don't want to see Judy. Me neither. I, I definitely I... won't see Maleficent because I thought the first yeah. one was trash. Uh... Um, actually. Yesterday, I watched a show on like the recent movies, like you know, just a talk on YouTube about movies. Mm -hmm. And they said that Judy is like not great, really not great. It's like, and even uh, it was mentioned that even Rene Zellweger was isn't even that good. You know, I, the recent things that I've seen her in have not been good. I, I do not think that she has gotten better as being an actress over time. Hmm. So. Yeah, I, I don't I, remember her being in any movie, actually. Well, I, you know, Jerry Maguire, uh, Brid the Bridget Jones movies are very good. Those are the three that I would go to for. Oh, and you know what? OK, I take it back. She was really good in Cold Mountain. That was that was a good performance. Um, I think she got it, actually, for uh, Cold Mountain. That's a good fucking movie. Cold Mountain. OK. Uh, underrated. Um, I was makeup and hair studying like in Joker. Yeah, that's one one mate. What you know? It's just his makeup and his his hair. That's it. Like, what else is in the movie that's worth, like, you know, giving a work to? What makeup for Joker? Yeah, right. It's good though. It is, <laughs> it's but like, good, though. <laughs> I feel like Bombshell. You don't recognize uh, Charlie Theron. Well, let's not all. forget though. This is hairstyling too. Right. <laughs> I mean, uh, someone had to style De Niro's hair. I'm just saying, he looked pretty good. He looked pretty good. True, but yeah. I, I still go with 1917. It doesn't really seem like there's a giant standout for makeup. Usually, like, I, no. for some reason, I would think Irishman would be in there because you know they had to have some makeup in there. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Or Rocketman, honestly. I'm really not sure what to go with. I probably lean towards Bombshell because Charlize Theron does look like Megan Kelly. Yeah, uh, like I, I think Bombshell is gonna win, but I still root for 1917. I think. Yeah. 
Just another um, nomination for Joker out of the 11 nominations. Totally undeserved, honestly. Yeah, baby! Anyway. Um. All right, next one. Best achievement costume design. Again, dude, Joker, get out of here. It's like, a good costume, though. It's a good costume. Yeah, that's, but that's it. Yeah, but think about Nothing it. That is more. going to... Okay, but you got to... Okay, you got to... Just think about this for a minute. It's such an iconic role. It blew so many people away. Okay, regardless of how you pretty damn good. Yeah. Regardless of how you feel about it, that costume that he is wearing is going to be cosplayed and shit for a long time. It already, so. yeah, yeah, right. It is already iconic, but still, I think overall, like this one, I want this to go to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood because they mm. totally nailed it. Mm. Did they though? Did they? They did. Did they? Dude, fuck you. Um, I actually. <laughs> I actually agree with you there. The costume design Thank in you. Hollywood is very good. I would probably also lead towards Irishman, but I would probably give it towards Hollywood because it was more eclectic. Yeah, but I also Jojo heard Rabbit that though, is... Jojo Rabbit as well. I think uh, you know. I'm I gonna mean, see that next week. Actually, I mean, who doesn't love a Nazi outfit? Am I right? <laughs> I mean, right. I'm just, I'm just gonna throw this out though. The you know the Gestapo, you know. The black suits? Be careful, pretty, dude. Pretty styling. I'm just saying, they're pretty styling. You know, you got to give them credit. Whoever was you're designing. Not the first one to say that. Whoever was designing the Nazi uniform, man, they they knew what they Hugo were doing. Boss, actually. <laughs> oh my god, is that real? Yes. Is that real? Oh my it's god. real. Um, oh, that's crazy. Anyway, yeah. Little Women also is said to have amazing costumes, so you know, I I think this is between Little Women and Once Upon a Time. I'm just gonna say this right now. I have no desire to see Little Women. No desire. Hmm? I have no, no desire to see Little Women. Yeah, I, it's just because I've read the book and I've seen too many adaptations of it. I just like if I might watch it, but I'm not. I'm I, really not hyped. I have to see it because Timothy Chalamet is in it. And your girl Pew. Sir Ronan. Pooh. Florence Pooh Florence is in it. Pooh is, she's Oscar nominated. <laughs> that's that's great. Actually, Little Women. I this 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 time is the first time where I like. By the time the Oscars. Um, like the Oscar show, mm-hmm. um, I will have seen all these movies, like all the the best picture nominees, and I'm dude, I'm so hyped about that. Little Women's the only one. Right. No, I, like Jojo Rabbit and Little Women, I will see in like one or two weeks. Oh, okay, I got you, I got you. And uh, I think that's it then. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, mm-hmm. costume design Hollywood, please. I agree. I agree. Best achievement in production design. Um. Oh, this is this is actually hard. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wanted to go to Hollywood because I feel but like you're leaning towards 1917 I and know. Parasite. Mm. Parasite also looks fucking great, and it's like, I mean, it looks like a house. I mean, yeah, but it's very clever design. Like, it's it's, like it's good. A, looks like Believe a modern me. day house to me. <laughs> You have to see the movie, dude. <laughs> I know, I do. I know, I do. I, um, I, I agree that the hype bug is has bit me, and I would like to see Parasite. I'm, I have really nothing bad to say about Parasite. It looks like a, a good romp. So, and also, 1917 also like, it's super good in in the production design. But I feel like for me, the reason why I love Hollywood so much is because they brought the 60s to life in Los Angeles so well. Uh, mm, and I feel mm. like production design, they deserve it. Honestly, I agree on the costumes, but the Hollywood aspect left me a little wanting more. Oh, really? That, that was one of the disappointing things for Hollywood for me because I, I didn't think they showed enough of uh, Hollywood. Okay. <sighs> like the Playboy That's Mansion fair. stuff was good, but I wanted more of that, and they didn't. And the Western set was amazing. I uh, yeah, I, I don't like the Western shit at all. I thought it was. <sighs> it was okay. Anyway. Things. We should move on before that, you know, gets too deep. Um, best achievement of film editing. Film editing. Now, this is the guy that sits back and edits the film on him. And th- this is easier <laughs> to to determine than sound editing. Like for me, this is. I'm going with Ford v Ferrari. Not Parasite. I mean, Parasite is also great, but like uh, I think. The, the editing of the of the race scenes in, in that movie is it's, it's outstanding. It's, yeah. it's the best thing about the movie. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough for me to call this one, honestly, editing. Because you've only I, seen two of those movies. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and I've edited I've edited a few things in my day. So you know I get I it. Not, not a picture. 
No, not a picture. You're right. I do. I, I could see why Joker got nominated, though. I could see that. Even Irishman, because I thought Irishman did very well with the pace of the film jumping back and forth. So, Jojo Rabbit, Jojo. though. Jesus Christ, man. That, the nomination for Jojo is just unbelievable here. I mean, how good can it possibly be, Almon? It's so good that, that Scarlett Johansson is nominated twice. <laughs> Now this category next though has always been one of my favorites. Oh yeah, and I'm dude, give it to the Lidos, please. Come on. Oh no. But I know no. that 1917 will win. Yeah. Sure. I, Roger Deakins, even though I haven't seen 1917, Roger Deakins has been my favorite uh, director of photography ever yes. since I was like, because he even did like Miller's Crossing and shit way back in the day. Like he's been around a long time. He's done a lot of the Jill and Ethan Cohen movies. His tonal, I don't know what it is about, but I can tell when it's Roger Deakins and it just jumps at me right away. He's got a an eye for the shot. So, right. And even though I haven't seen the movie, I'm leaning towards that one. So, Yeah, also just the fact how they pulled it off, it's amazing. Like, yeah. you know, 1917 is, is really an experience. And I, Roger Deakins, he really deserved the Oscar for Blade Runner. Yeah. And that was his first one. Like, holy shit. Yeah, that's um, pretty astounding to me right there. But still, I, I'm i glad that The Lighthouse got nominated. Um, Is which it the tells only... Me that, the, it tells me that they were clearly... They knew The Lighthouse existed, right? Yeah, right. They knew that this movie is out there, but they didn't care about the performances, which is mm-hmm. absolutely outrageous. A little, little crazy there. A little crazy. Um... Now, I would say I would say it did deserve cinematography if it was shot in widescreen. I would I would lean. I think you're wrong. I cannot stand the four by three format. No, I think it's actually six by five. Whatever the fuck it is. I thought it was terrible. I thought it was terrible. And I didn't like the Joker was shrunk down either. That's what I mean. I don't want to see that become a fucking thing. You know, Um, yeah, like. I mean, I'm I'm fine with it in the in the lighthouse because that's an artsy movie. But I don't, I don't want to see that in every other movie, of course. Uh, yeah, Joker does look really good though, so it looks. Better. I can see the nomination. Yeah, I mean, it was very you know they 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 shot that movie very well. So they did, yeah. Which, Irishman which is the movie. Irishman is 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 good, but it's it's straight. It's up not Scorsese. outstanding. Yeah, it's just Scorsese in my And opinion. also, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is super solid, but I feel like, you know, you, you don't have a chance against 1917, I think. Not when you have a one-shot type right, thing yeah. on, I don't think. Because, you know, I think about Birdman and just... Birdman was... I, Birdman. I, I'd really like to watch Birdman again. I, I love Birdman. Me too. Um, the cameraman of Birdman is, is one of those... Like, I think he won three years in a row for Gravity, Birdman, and... Uh, Revenant, mm. totally deserved, of course. The Revenant Gravity's, is probably my favorite shot movie of all time, or one of my favorite. Gravity is a very good uh, testament to good cinematography in a CGI world, too. So it's yes, pretty fucking good. Gravity, that aspect. I liked Gravity actually. Gravity was pretty I, good. I don't, but I can see its strength, of course. I like the 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 tension. You know, I like the tension of space is always going to get me a little bit. Yeah. You know, I'm not a science fiction person or space person that mm, like Ad Astra, Blade Runner. You know, keep going. Yeah, but those are keep like, going, Ad, bro. Keep going. Ad Let's hear it. An emotional movie. It's you still know, science it's, fiction. God damn it. Yeah, but it's not about that. Yeah. Okay. Let's not get into that. It's a science fiction ripoff of Hearts of Darkness. There you go. Which is fine. Um, <laughs> best at that screenplay. <laughs> um. So, yeah, I've seen the the. Th- um, three on the left. Yeah. And I'm. Oh, this is adapted. Okay. No, never mind. Uh, it, like, is Joker really an adaptation? I think it's just in that category because it's based on characters that already exist, right? Yeah. I wonder if that'll be the little Oscar they give to Todd Phillips. I wonder. But then I kind of almost see Taika Waititi getting an Oscar here for this uh, this category. Jojo Rabbit seems to be really good, and it's kind of surprising. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm I'm conflicted a little bit about it being nominated for Best Picture, but at the same time, I'm kind of happy because it looks like it's a... There looks like there's drama elements in there, sure, but overall, it looks like a comedy, so... Yeah, 
And Taika happen. Waititi is just the man right now. He is the man. I think there's... I don't think there's anything bad you could say about Taika because no. I think he, in all circles, he's very well respected. And speaking of that, there I saw a news thing today on Screen Rant that right, Star Wars. He might be approached for a Star Wars movie, so I think that would be fucking just a home run if they can get him. Yes, there. I think Taika Waititi has a good chance to to get into my my list of cool people. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Taika, Taika is just. I feel like he's just on a streak right now. A really he is, yeah. Um, I think best that have the screenplay. I, I'll go with the Irishman. Steven Zalian, the man. Um, I mean the two popes is all right, but I, I think the Irishman. I, I'm in my prediction. Tyke is gonna yeah. get this. Tyke is gonna get this. It's either gonna I be honestly, Tyke. Or, I, hope, I hope that he's gonna get it. It's either gonna be Tyke or Todd. That's what I think. Okay. I don't like the, the like, I don't like the screenplay of Joker actually. You don't like Joker though, so. No, I, you've I mean, come to terms it's, it's with so hard. this. I criticize it's that taken, movie all the time, but it's taken like, like it. seven. It's taken like seven episodes for this to come out. <laughs> Joker started as a nine. No, it is a ten. And now it's slipped. slipped it's an down. eight. I, I still eight's like still it, pretty good. Eight's still pretty good in your in your. It book. is, yeah. Because you consider sixes to be good too. True. Six I mean, is watchable. not good. Yes, yeah, six. I always call it decent, and seven is good. Seven's like good experience. Yeah, and eight is like really good. You need to watch an eight, right? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, like Drive is an eight. You know. Yeah, because I feel yeah, like I Joker do. is still a movie that demands to be watched. You know, kind of like just like Drive in a way, because you can, you know. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's overhyped, I think, and like it doesn't deserve all these nominations. Not all of them. Some. Of I don't course. think it deserves all of them. I, I agree with you there. I, I don't think it deserves all of them, but I'm happy that it did because it proves that a dark rated R film can fucking still show up. Right. You know, Barbarian is totally right. Joker deserves to be watched one time. Right. Because the second time I didn't enjoy it that much. Yeah. But I watched I watched the ending a couple of days ago again because the ending is fucking like the finale is pretty. I love great. the ending. Yeah, they had a great yeah. ending there. Great ending. <laughs> But once it is watched, it discuss for ten minutes and move on. Yeah, right. Um, best original screenplay. I'm not oh. sure. Like, 1917. I mean, it has a good <laughs> screenplay, but like, it's not like super dialogue strong. Yeah. Or is it? I mean, it's it, it's good dialogue. But, uh, I, I feel I, like the. I yeah. personally think Tarantino is going to get this. Personally, he might, but I feel like Noah Baumbach also deserves it. And yeah, Bob I mean, Genoa just from. Also. Just from what I've seen from the Noam Baumbach script and little flashes of what I've seen, it seems like it's a very good dialogue-heavy movie, too. It is, yeah. I don't agree with the Ryan Johnson being nominated for screenplay here. I think I, mm. I, I like Knives Out, but I don't think I don't think Knives Out. Knives Out isn't as clever as it seems. I, think. I, I agree. I agree. I agree. I, but I it's they, still, I still really like the movie. You know? I really like it too, but I don't. Original screenplay is a big deal still to me. I think original right, screenplay yeah. is one of the big awards here. So, and you know, I Tarantino's gotten it before for screenplay. Uh, I could see it happening, but it could go to this Bong Joon Ho too. So, but I think it's between it might, those yeah. three. I think it's of between course, the yeah. three of Bombach, Tarantino, and Bong Joon Ho. <laughs> yeah, true. I I totally agree. What's your gut telling you on this one? For you um it's so hard because like i think all three are really good but mm -hmm. so different that i can't really compare them yeah because my gut tells me tarantino because regardless of how i feel about this film i think the hype is ramping up a little bit for it and i honestly think it has a shot at taking best picture i so. actually heard from some people that they are they, like some some people say on youtube that it's very likely that it will get best picture I think it might because Tarantino's never gotten a Best Picture film as well. And one thing I know about the Oscars is they have a hard on, a fucking hard on for movies about Hollywood. So yeah, although La La Land didn't win, so almost they thought it won, but it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that All right, was great. that was great. Best achievement in directing. I think this is going like I think Sam Mendes is gonna. Do take we it. talk about the controversial? 
issues with the directing category this year, Amon. What's what's the country? No female directors have been nominated. Oh, oh, actually, yeah, I heard that it's kind of that Greta Gerwig is kind of snubbed. That's what I heard too. But I I Um, honestly think it's like they're pointing to every female director that directed a film too. It's like, uh, but dude, this year is so strong. I don't feel like there's some kind of discrimination happening. One of the best things. One of the best things I saw on Twitter was a person saying, "How do you nominate Little Women for Best Picture?" And not nominate Greta Gerwig for Best Director. And the guy not, uh, responded, there's only five movies in the directing category. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. you know, but, you got to make choices. Todd, Todd Phillips could, like, I am I feel like he, out of those five, he's the one I could, you know, he, he could be exchanged with mm. somebody else. Noah I, feel like, I think they'll give Todd Phillips a nod. I think he has a chance at that adapted screenplay. That's the only thing I see him. Yeah, but not director, honestly. Yeah, I think Mendez or Bong Joon Ho, or they might yeah. uh, they might do a little. Uh, I don't think they're going to do any Irishman love. Honestly, I don't see it. I yeah, me see, neither. I don't see Scorsese taking anything. I see Tarantino having a good Tarantino's, shot. I think Tarantino is going to get screenplay, but not director. That's happened before. I just feel like he might have a chance to clean up this year. He might have a chance. Maybe. And so. I, I would I would like to see that. But also, I, I want the other movies to get some love, you know. So I think yeah. I'm rooting with... Yeah, it's Sam Mendes or Bong Joon-ho. I'm... Well, you have to pick. Which one? <laughs> uh, since I like Parasite more, I'm going with Bong Joon-ho. Bong Joon-ho. Yeah. It's so weird. I still need you to watch Akja too. Just oh yeah, right. Speaking of terrible, you also made Netflix Snowpiercer. Movies. I love. Yeah, that's the thing. I you know I love Snowpiercer. I love Snowpiercer, man. That movie, I fucking love it. Okja though, I just fucking terrible movie. Okja man. seems weird. Yeah, it's so bad. Um, it's uh, the worst Jake Gyllenhaal performance I've ever fucking seen. <laughs> Haven't you seen Velvet Bustle? No, I haven't. I okay, haven't me neither. Those, Never yeah. mind. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it took me a minute. I was like, Velvet Goldmine? I was like, no. No, no. The, yeah. the the movie with uh, Tony Collette. and uh, Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Seems yeah. to be pretty shitty. Yeah. Um, best Supporting Actress. Um, I heard that people were like super hyped about Florence Pugh getting nominated. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen the movie yet, but you know, I like Florence Pugh a lot, so I'm, I'm also happy with that, I guess. But yeah. I think this is going to... Laura Dern's gonna take it. I think Laura Dern will take it too. I'd still like to see Bombshell, but I don't. Uh, I was I get... surprised about Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, ScarJo with the double this year. Right, There's always yeah. that one with the double, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. It didn't look like it was a uh, Oscar performance from the trailers, but I can't judge by the trailer, so maybe yeah, true. We could be proven wrong there, but that is an oddball for sure. Just mm-hmm. by how the awards season was going, I think Laura Dern's going to take it because I think she won almost everything. Yeah. And the Golden Globe as well. So Yeah. Sometimes that doesn't go as planned, too. So I'm leaning towards you, though, with Laura Dern. It seems like she's... Yeah, she deserves it. It's good performance. It seems like she's got the hype this year. Yeah, and I, I grew to like Laura Dern, actually. Now we get to some controversy. Um, right, because I think okay, just get Anthony Hopkins out of here I and agree. put Willem Dafoe in. I agree. Yeah. Well, I because put like Pattinson as in. well, either I, one. I could, yeah. I could say the same about the uh, leading role with Jonathan Price. It's mm-hmm. not that I don't uh, that I think that they both were like bad in the two poles. But no. honestly, how can you not nominate Pattinson and Dafoe? Yeah, this is one of the moments where we completely agree because that's the uh, second I saw that I was like, okay, I'm sure the Pope's is good. I'm sure both actors are great, but I don't see how. And the Tom no. Hanks is a surprise too because I don't. I'm, I'm wondering why is Tom Hanks in supporting? Uh, he's not the main character in the movie. Have you seen it's this told movie? By, no, but uh, I heard that it's told by some other guy's perspective. Okay. Um, but still. <sighs> But I feel like I would also be fine with Tom Hanks not being nominated, but Defoe, you know? Yeah. Dude, dude Defoe and Pattinson, they fucking deserve it. It's and one I would, of the, I would yeah, love to see Pattinson getting a nomination. It's a tragedy. I completely it agree. Really is. Regardless of how I feel about the story of that movie, to not nominate those guys for the performances they gave. 
It's pretty yeah. crazy. That's pretty crazy, dude. I don't, uh, I don't see how that happened. And we go back to the lighthouse getting nominated for cinematography and clearly they knew the movie existed. If it wasn't nominated for cinematography, then you'd know that there was some kind of conspiracy. Although there's gotta be something that rubbed voters the wrong way here with the lighthouse. Maybe just not enough people have seen it. No, like, I mean they all get their copies, man. Every the Academy yeah. always they see everything. So it wasn't that. There's something up with them not getting nominated, though, and I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it because that's very odd to me. Very odd. Because you know, I, I I didn't enjoy the movie. I didn't, but those performances, I was locked in the entire time. Like I they when they're on the screen, you demand to watch and. Uh, it's kind of yeah. weird. It's very strange that they didn't get nominated. Very strange. Um, and about these nominations, I think Brett Pitt's going to take it, um, honestly. I think he will, too. I think he but will, too. But if he's not, uh, I think, I, I hope for El Pacino. Yeah. I mean, I, obviously, I'm going Pacino. I want him to win, but I, I feel like the hype of, of Brett here yeah. is, is going to take it for your... And, he, uh, like, he is absolutely the leading man in the award season. He won all the awards. There's a lot of hype. So, a lot of hype. Yes. A lot of hype. And like I said, there seems to be... Uh, there's not much love for the Irishman. So. True. I mean, it, it got a lot of nominations, but I don't know. And I still don't get why De Niro is not... I thought De Niro was great as uh, the lead. So. No. I don't know. All right, best performance by an actress in leading role. Yeah, I have only seen one of those movies again. And I think Scarlett Johansson actually has a good, good chance. But... I, yeah, I'm. I don't want Rini Zellweger to win. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised Charlize Theron gets the nomination here as well, because she didn't get nominated on Golden Globes. I don't think. So that was a bit of a surprise. Did I lose you? Did we no. lose Amon? No, he's here. Um, I gotta see Little Women, then I can judge probably. And Harriet seems to be not a good movie, but, like, I don't know. Yeah. There's something in it that's good, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just root for Scarlett Johansson. Um, another, uh, this is another category that caused contra- controversy on uh, Twitter with uh, uh, Lupita Luanga not getting nominated for us. Which uh, Yeah, but come on. I agree, man. I'm like, come on. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, all right, you guys are just reaching for fucking straws here. I mean, I I don't buy into the whole Academy Awards as racist bullshit. I just don't. I think no. that's, I think that's too easy of a thing to say. So also like, come on. I mean, us her performance is the best thing in the movie, but the movie kind of sucks and she like I liked her, but it's not as outstanding as, you know. I don't I don't know. It was for me it wasn't award worthy. No, no. Um, Maybe like People's Choice or MTV Awards. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But not, not, not Academy Awards, man. I just every time the nominations come out, I have to read all this fucking backlash shit. Like the same with the female director thing and people of color not getting nominated. And uh, I don't know. I just don't buy into that. I just don't buy into that at all. Kind of yeah. crazy. All right, best performance <laughs> by an actor in a leading role. So please just, you know, Jonathan Price, switch him with Robert Pattinson, and we're good. Mm. Even though I heard, you know, I heard very good things about Adam Sandler. And it would be so cool if Adam Sandler got Oscar nominated, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm afraid that Joaquin is going to take it because I really want Adam Driver to win. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a lock. I think if there's any lock in the Oscars this season, it'll be Joaquin Phoenix taking it for the Joker. Yeah, I mean, he deserves it, but like, for me, Adam Driver's performance was way more. I I could, you know, I, I was connecting more to that. Resonated that more with you, right? I'm not that good with the words, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, DiCaprio. I'm uh, honestly, as much as I love his role, and I think it's one of his best performances in in years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. like, I. Honestly, it was I would not, have been not, no, not, I, I would better, have been not better than Pattinson. I mean, that's no right. Way. I would have yeah, been fine okay. if he wasn't nominated yeah. because then maybe Pattinson or like even Taron Edgerton, I felt like, yes. Oh my God. I didn't even think about that. Armin. What a snub. Right. And wow. like for me, 
you know, don't give DiCaprio the nomination, but give the Oscar to Brad Pitt. You know, then I'm good. But oh honestly, yeah, Taron Egerton, Golden Globe winner, no yeah, nomination. That's, yeah, dude, uh, I, I apologize. I didn't even think about that. Your boy, Taron Egerton, getting the snub for best performance by an actor because I personally believe that Leonardo, Leonardo got nominated just because he's Leonardo DiCaprio with this one. I think Jonathan um, Price as well. I still need to see there's two popes to have like any, you know, but I, I still I don't mean, see Jonathan Price being better than Willem Dafoe or Pattinson or, you know, and from Adam what I've Sandler. seen, <laughs> and, and you know, the Adam Sandler, I don't know yet. I don't know yet because from the trailers for Uncut Gems, it just seems like I'm still watching Adam Sandler. So I don't yeah, know. But I don't know. I, he seems to be kind of a badass, though. And also from the trailers, what I really like uh what I'm really hyped for in Uncut Gems is Lakeith Stansfield. Yeah, he seems to be really cool in that. That's one of your your boys, right? And he was kind of let down in Knives Out. Yeah, he didn't. Yeah, talk about a one of the most minor roles. That's the yeah. thing about Knives Out is you had so many good actors in there. I don't think they were properly used. I don't think Don Johnson was properly used. No, nah, he got. Yeah, he he like it wasn't an enough screen time probably, but it was a good amount. I feel like I wasn't mad about that. But Tony Collette, her character is kind of a like, yeah, I don't know. It's just Knives Out has some problems, but I still really enjoyed it. Like, I feel like the best directed actor in that was Daniel Daniel Craig. I thought he was mm. fantastic. Anna Di Armas was also really good. I think she was good. But Michael, Michael Shannon was a letdown, honestly. Yeah, the character was just like that's what I mean. I, I I'm having issues with Ryan Johnson's directing of people. I think. <laughs> yeah. All right, so your pick is Joker. Hands down. Hands My pick down. is Adam Driver. Um, now, best motion picture of the year. Actually, are we, wait a minute, wait. Are we gonna bother with Pain and Glory? I mean, are you gonna see Pain and Glory? I don't think I will because I think it ran at the cinema, but uh -huh. only for two days, and I missed it. So I, I don't think there's a chance that I will see it in time. And I don't think Antonio Banderas has really ever been that great of an actor, personally. So no, he's know. just for me. He's he's a cool personality. I like him. No, but, I like his movies and shit, but I don't. I don't know if I see that happening. Yeah, he's, he's not on the same level for me as Joaquin or DiCaprio or Driver. You know, right. Man. I mean, yeah, I can Driver. safely say this will not be Driver's only time at the no. Oscars for sure. He's coming back. Whereas Joaquin, this could be the the shining moment for him, and that's about it. I think. Man, I don't know. I. It's hard for me to say that. I think Joaquin Phoenix he was would sh shoot always. himself in the foot here sometimes. Yeah, maybe. He's I he's a weird guy. He's kind of Sean Penn esque to me, where he doesn't give a yeah. fuck, you know. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, best picture. Um, honestly, nine movies. Nine movies. Yay. Yeah, but honestly, <laughs> like even though I haven't seen like two of them, I haven't seen, but still, I'm fine with all of those being mm. nominated. Like I think this is an amazing year for movies. Mm, mm. And like I, I of course I, I see that the lighthouse is not nominated for best picture. I can totally see that. But uh Yeah. Yeah. For acting dude. Ah. Um but yeah, by by the time uh, when the Oscars happen, I will have seen Jojo Rabbit and Little Women and it's gonna be cool, man. It's you, definitely you know? cool to see Ford versus Fiari in there. You know? Yeah, but I think it's the weakest one actually. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like Ford and Jojo. Yeah. yeah. I don't think that Jojo Rabbit has a chance at being best no, picture. No, no, no. I feel like they just kind of tossed it in there Black Panther style, personally. But It seems to be better than Black Panther, though. I feel like they need a popular movie category. I, I feel like they need a mm. best pop movie at this point. Cause... But it's hard to determine what's you know what counts as a popular movie, I guess. I mean, I would have put Black Panther in there, but, you know. Yeah. I, just, I wouldn't have put it in best fucking picture. Like, that was. Not at all. Especially when Infinity War was a better fucking movie than that, you know? All right. Um, so, your pick. The for, Irish. For, uh, well, even though I haven't seen 1917, I feel like 1917 has a shot. It has, um, yeah. I'll just say the ones that I feel like have a shot. I feel like 1917 has a shot. Parasite has a shot. I do not see the Irishman have a shot unless something happens between now and then. Um, I definitely think Hollywood has a shot here. Um, Maybe the biggest. 
And there is a part of me, part of me, that thinks Joker might steal it. So, Which I think would be outrageous, actually. I would be happier, though, with the Joker taking it over Hollywood. So there's your controversy. I, 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 I understand that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I would much rather see that happening than... Because I, I really don't want this to be the movie that Tarantino wins for. But I still oh, I respect do. Tarantino. <laughs> I know you do. And I still respect Tarantino enough to be happy for him if he wins. But I don't know. I mean, the last few years of the Oscars haven't been good for Best Picture, I don't think. Uh, yeah, but this year is like, honestly, I got to say, I think 2019 for me is the best year for movies of all time. Not because of the... the, the insanely good movies that came out but also because i, I experienced it life you know mm. and it was it was so, such a fun year for movies mm. yeah yeah man I, I i think you could look at any year though and say that though i mean there's there's plenty mm. of great movies man but i get you what I you're saying that you actually 2018 was weaker way weaker you were more engaged this year let's see the 2018 awards just real quick i want to see oh yeah shape of fucking water Get the fuck out. No, of here. no, go to nineteen. That's like, you know, the movies from twenty eighteen. This is terrible. What a terrible list here. I gotta go three billboards billboards outside of Evan got snubbed that year for sure. Yeah. Uh, but twenty eighteen, let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Green Book, Star is Born, Black Panther, Black Clansman, Bohemian Rhapsody, Roma, the favorite, and Vice. I for me, the gr- only movie for all of those. That deserves best picture as favorite. Mm, not even I wouldn't even agree with that though, because I liked the favorite, but I didn't think. Yeah, I think the yeah. favorite is is weaker than this year's nominees, like most of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you there. And Green Book, sure. as much as I like Green Book, I like the movie, but still, it it wouldn't have a chance against like 1917 and uh, Marriage Story, Parasite, The Irishman, and stuff. You know. Now 2017 was a good year dude hell or high water la la land manchester by the sea hidden figures hacksaw ridge arrival yeah that moonlight. was it. moonlight is also great now did you yeah. ever see lion i always wanted to no, see I've lion that looks i've good. seen all of those except for fences and lion yeah me too me too i don't know but Fen- fences seems cool because i i like denzel a lot yeah and lion i don't know Ugh. Don't really know. Doesn't seem like my kind of movie. 2016 spotlight over the revenant. It's terrible. It's just terrible. <laughs> Mad Max Fury Road got nominated though. I forgot yeah, about that. That's fucking great. Yeah. That is a win for the Academy. I gotta give them credit there. That was a uh, that was nice that they put that in there. I like that. Dude, dude, I, I'm just having a thought. I might just watch Mad Max tonight. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's so great. I would not mind watching that again, honestly. And 2015, Birdman won. Birdman, Whiplash, ooh, ooh. And Grand Budapest Hotel. I Theory think of everything was pretty good too. I, I, I really no. liked that one. I didn't like it that much. I think it's, no? it's, a, it's a rather conventional biopic, and not yeah. that exciting. I didn't like it that much. Like it, it's, it's in the six out of ten decent category. You just the you act, just the acting is great, of course, but yeah. Did Eddie Redmayne deserve it? Yes, over I think Michael he did. Keaton. Over Michael Keaton. I think he did. Oh, by oh, the way, oh, over Foxcatcher to Steve Carell. Mm. We have not talked also about the. Uh, did you see the Morbius trailer? I have not. No. I, oh. I avoid watching trailers. Honestly, I just you know with uncut gems. I was just I don't know. I, right, I don't give a shit what you avoid. You need to watch this trailer and tell me what you think of the last five seconds. I was hoping that you saw this. Because the last five seconds are going to blow you away a little bit. I'm telling you. I'm telling okay. you. Regardless okay. if you want to see the movie, you kind of have to now once you see the last five I seconds. I mean, Morbius has an interesting... Ca- which universe is that? Just watch the fucking trailer and then you'll know. You'll know. All oh, I can say, all I can say is that it seems like Marvel and Sony are playing very nice together right now. And it's a good thing. Um, so this is an MCU movie. No, it's a Sony movie. But Sony. it has My- Michael Keaton is in it. Is he the vulture? Well, yeah. That's what I'm saying okay. is now they have a bridge, which means Venom 
has a possibility of Spider-Man showing up, that kind of thing. Like they they can actually do this very well as long as Sony and Marvel actually play nice because it was the same thing with like I think J. Jonah Jameson is supposed to be yeah. in uh Morbius. It's rumored it says um which would be so amazing honestly like I, I, think, I already thought it was pretty great that he was in in uh, Far From Home. Yeah, I did too. I did too. Um, and Jared Harris is in it, you know. Mm-hmm. I hope the cast, dude. Matthew Smith is in it as well. I mean, they have a they have this Tyrese Gibson. They have a a nice well Tyrese Gibson. Yeah, he's cool. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know. That's, Not, I don't know. That's no. really helping the the acting. Have you seen Baby Boy? Did you ever see Baby no. Boy? Oh my God, Amon. So Baby Boy was like supposed to be the it's the John Singleton movie, you know, it's supposed to be like his new boys in the hood. Dude, just when you get a chance, just let me know if you were infuriated by Baby. I'm looking at the poster right now. It's sort of the hardest movies that I ever got through. I hated him so much. The Baby Boy character. Terrible. Dude, the poster looks so 2000s for me. Yeah, his... His acting in that was uh, pretty bad. But pretty Marcellus bad. Wallace is in it. <laughs> Didn't help it. I, I do. For me, in Pulp Fiction, one of my Marcellus is one of my favorite characters. He's such mm-hmm. a badass. Yeah, Bing Rames is amazing. I agree. Yeah. All right, I think that's it. With the Oscars. Yeah, doesn't uh, you know? It's not that exciting, I guess. <laughs> I think it. Re- I think it really is. No, nah, there's some there's, there's controversy. Something, there's something missing. I don't know what it is, but it's just. I don't know. It's just. It feels so paint by numbers predictable. I think that's. Do you I'm... are you missing a movie that you're really obsessed with or something like a mo- movie you you can root for? No, not really. So that's the like that's the Irishman for you, right? No. No, Dragged Across Concrete was my favorite movie that I saw last year, but it doesn't technically came out in 2018, so I got fucked there. Even though also, the American release was March, so it strange. Yeah, but the Dragged Across Concrete is not an Oscar movie. I disagree completely. Oh, okay. I thought, I thought Dragged Across Concrete was the best movie I saw of 2019. That's Hands fair. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can totally see that, but I disagree. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's to good. say like that it's it not an Oscar movie is, you know, there, there's a wide variety of Oscar movies because there's a lot of people that were mad when Pulp Fiction got nominated. You know, mm. let's, let's not forget Silence of the Lambs won Best Picture. Yeah, yeah but I feel like um, Craig Zala, he might need a movie that is like, that gets a lot of hype. I think then he could really get really big and famous, you know? Yeah, and that it doesn't is, seem like he's going to play by those rules either. No. Not for a while, anyway. He might but not give a shit cool about status. that. Yeah, I know, I know. Like, I feel like all three of them, all three of them have this yeah. cult uh, cult thing about them. I'd actually like to see Brawl and Cellbook 99 again. Um, yeah, I enjoyed I think, it a lot more the second time as well. I think Drive is also in that category of movie. Mm-hmm. That, you know, modern cult classic almost. I think Drive is a cult classic. That's probably why there's a big part of me rooting for Joker, honestly, because I, you know, I, I want that dark rated R shit to keep fucking getting in there. Mm. You know, I, f- I feel like it deserves to be in there. I hate people that wince at fucking violence. Drives me crazy. I heard that. It's a dark. Um, I heard that uh, the Batman might actually be R rated. Ooh. Boy, like that Robert would be Patton, that would be Patton, a fucking big deal right there if they did a rating right. on Batman, yeah. Pattinson said something like he, he wants to stretch the PG thirteen rating, you know, and might even go R rating. And Matt Reeves is on board with that. Mm. Like they wanna do something crazy. Which I would uh, like because I feel yeah. like I think Gotham is, is uh Gotham is dark. It's supposed to be dark, so you know. And Colin yeah. Farrell's actually confirmed the Penguin. I'm still is, iffy on that. I'm still which iffy is on weird, that. but I yeah. I do like it because I like Colin Farrell. Yeah, and he's gotten better. He's gotten better because he was really oh. not that great of an actor. <laughs> at, at, at I heard start. he's the best part in the Gentleman, 
which already he looks like, like it, it in, the, in the trailer. Yeah, he looks like it in the trailer for sure. He looks like he's gonna be fucking great in it. So, now look at this, eight point one currently. It seems to be a good fucking movie. That's pretty good, yeah. By your by your IMDb standards, All right. I'm is surprised this... you're not a Rotten Tomatoes guy. You know, I think Rotten Tomatoes is absolutely garbage. Thank you. Thank you. Rotten Tomatoes doesn't say anything, honestly. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's actually hurting movies too, because they right. promote the certified fresh shit, you know, and it's like... also it's possible on Rotten Tomatoes to really like bash on a movie so it gets a low rating and mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. On IMDb that doesn't really happen. IMDb yeah. is all, always kinda it averages out, you know. I think you have more film people on imdb and i think you have more movie people on rotten tomatoes true and then you yeah, have letterbox but yeah i agree with you though man I, rotten tomatoes leaves a bad taste in my mouth every time i hear about it so yeah i i don't like it when people like reference rotten tomatoes ratings to to say a movie is good or bad and stuff yeah, yeah. it doesn't mean shit no it doesn't i mean look at the the last jedi ratings on rotten tomatoes I think the critics are wrong, and I think the audience is wrong, too. About Last Jedi? Yeah. On Rotten yeah. Tomatoes, there's, like, extreme hate on Last Jedi. <laughs> and and the, criti- the, cri- the critical rating is extremely high. I don't know. It's... It's Rose Tico, bro. Oh, she... Actually, Kelly Mary Tran, also her birthday today. It's Something Rose like... Tico. The, they didn't explain Ray's parents. They didn't tell us who Snoke was. It's just... Oh, my God. I can't take it. Yeah, I hate, you know, the Star Wars fan base, just Jesus Christ. They all need to yeah. get a grip on themselves. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. The future of Star Wars is going to be an interesting venture, I think. Yeah, I hope they're, like, with, with Taika, they, they could go a different path, which would be well, really even, interesting. Even, even Favreau, because he's, he's, right. you know, he's a Disney darling, so... And what he did with the Mandalorian was pretty fucking good. He, uh, you know, it, it felt like a fucking Western. Like, he did very good with that. Yeah. So, definitely want to see more of that. Oh, and then Kenobi was confirmed. Kenobi finally officially confirmed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm really excited in a way because just seeing Ewan McGregor back in, in that role, it's, it, it does sound unreal to me, you know? I'm excited because I've always liked him in the role. I just never Me liked too. the George Lucas direction. Which no, the movies are awful because George Lucas is an awful director. They're terrible. They're just fucking yeah, man. Absolutely it's sad. Terrible. It's sad. It's just sad when I think about it. it just tears me up. <laughs> they had to add Horror. that whole Boba Fett angle. You know, it's fucking stupid, man. I hate. I hate <laughs> the prequels so much when I think about it, man. Yeah. <sighs> Let's introduce Darth Maul. He's so bitching, like, oh yeah, we're just gonna, just gonna kill him. Yeah. Did you know that like the the Darth Maul fight scene was not directed by George Lucas? Makes sense. That was sense. what? What's it called? Uh, second unit. He was just like he was out of the country directing some shot reverse shot dialogue bullshit for the political stuff, which is absolutely mm. god awful. And like the stunt coordinator, he he directed like the scene, which is like the best scene, the, the only good scene in the movie. And I do feel like they went way too far with the Jedi, you know, um, choreography too in the prequels because it doesn't it, it doesn't, doesn't make natural and it doesn't make sense now because like you don't see that in four, five, or six, and in seven, eight, nine, which I'm happy that they, you know, JJ and, and Ryan Johnson both they stayed away from. Jedi is jumping all over the fucking place. Yeah, and also this, like, when they fight in the prequels, it looks perfectly choreographed. Like, you know, yeah, like yeah, they it's, it's, anticipate every move. It's, it's, so it's not, there's no yeah. tension. Mm-hmm. And yeah, <laughs> I hate people who defend the, the, the prequels. Dude. There's such good things in the pre. There is a few good things in the prequels. I like, I love Grievous. I've always liked to General Grievous. Yeah, that's uh, fair. I do like the fight between Anakin and Obi Wan at the end. I do like that. I like it seeing Anakin gets a little get goofy fucked though. up. It does get yeah. It, it no, I mean that 
Yeah, also the cho- the the choreography has some some moments where it's just stupid, and the dialogue is awful, of course. And I don't know if you know this either, but George Lucas he went back to Return of the Jedi with the scene. Oh, spoilers! If anyone hasn't seen Return of the <laughs> Jedi, when the scene when uh, Darth Vader picks up the Emperor and throws him off, uh, he added a fucking no in there, and that drives me crazy. In fact, for for one of the many special editions that Star Wars has had, apparently that was added in, you know, and I don't, I don't like that. I hate, you yeah, know, I like totally. the silence of Darth Vader, just picking him up and toss him. I don't need that corny ass fucking revenge of the Sith. Darth Vader, no shit in there. In general, like George Lucas going back to the movies, editing like some stuff into them. Mm-hmm. It's, it's so bad. Some of like, it's I really think, good. Like some of it, like the, uh, the cloud city windows. I've always liked that. I've always liked the cloud city windows. Yeah. But by this point you can't watch the original theater cut of, uh, a new hope anymore. There's only, there's only one way. There's only one way. Yeah. And that's it's, like some, some weird Java CGI in it. No, 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 no. The laser disc, the laser disc version, oh. which you can still buy from eBay or whatever. The laser yeah, disc on. version is still out there. Right. Or VHS. Or VHS. You could always go VHS. That's... Just think I don't like George Lucas. Just think so about bad. how much of my life I spent watching VHS. You know? Well, you know how good you have it, Amon? You know? All these clear pictures. I know, right? HD and shit. 4K. <laughs> you know? It's like you're living the dream. <laughs> I mean, you're living it too. Yeah, but I'm too old. It's already over. No, oh, okay. That's sad. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good word to end this show today. It was a good show. I'm glad that actually, uh, what? I'm fine with it with the show being one one and a half hours. If we don't go off topic, you know, that's yeah. fine. Totally. Usually we do. Usually we do. Yeah, which is fine it. too. I mean, I always tell you two hours, and then it ends up being three fucking hours anyway. So it just yeah, we know. just decide on the fly basically. Yeah. yeah. All right. There's a good then show I to guess. do, dude. I guess see you next week, but we don't we don't have a topic yet. Uh, I will not be here next week. I'm gonna oh, yeah, be right, in California. Right, yeah. Hello, life, God. Um, <laughs> but you'll be back the the week afterwards. I'll be back the week after. So, so do you want me to prepare like a big movie quiz? I just realized that I'm talking to Ryan Gosling on Discord. From Drive, yeah. I just saw that it just out of the corner of my eye. That's fucking so funny. <laughs> um, ah, you crack me up sometimes, dude. All right, yeah, give uh, me, give me something. We need a topic because I'm, I'm, I gotta admit, I'm sick of going over these fucking award shit. Like, I'm done. Me too. I'm done. But also, like, I know that you don't like watching movies, you know. So <laughs> I um, do, but it, yeah, it's been yeah. tough lately. I can just I, I can prepare a big movie quiz because that's really fun. Not in the style of quotes because I I thought like you you had some problems with quotes. Yeah, that was um, terrible. That was but terrible. I like I think I once had like a quick quiz, just general questions. I could try that. Um, mm, yeah. I think that's pretty fun and uh, also very fun to do. So I might just do that. Yeah, because I can't really think of anything that's. Because I know that if I pick something, we're gonna watch this. I might not be able to get to it. So right. Yeah, I'm done with that. I like quizzes, so I'll be uh, I'll be fired up and ready for that in two weeks. All right, All right then I guess uh, talk to you in two weeks. You got it, man. Have a good weekend. You too. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it for Stairway to Cinema episode 13. Shout out to Buck Nutty for stopping by and uh, talking a little bit. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, that's going to do it. I'll be back in two weeks. We'll continue Stairway to Cinema. Stairway to Cinema episode 14. So that'll be fun. That'll be fun. I have to admit, I am sick of going over these goddamn award nominations. So I'm glad that we finally got over it. But we'll definitely have to do an Oscar recap when the Oscars air in February. So be on the lookout for that. That should be a fun show as well. Anyway, see you guys in two weeks. Thanks for stopping by.